Now here we have an EG4 door, my personal ESI or technically an EG8 that's powered by a D16A6 non-VTEC motor and we'll talk about the setup and also take you guys out for a drive as we put gas on my car and also make some pulls and also talk about like for example dyno test the stock PO8 intake manifold and then back-to-back -back dyno it with the ported PO8 and then finally my skunk to the sported and of course we'll talk about my cams two from Bisimoto and one from Mugen <laughs> So before we pull the head to show you guys, we're going to discuss about the setup and all the aspects of the engine. But of course, before all of that, we go with the startup. We're going to start it up now from cold because we're going to gas it up before we pull the head because it's going to be sitting for a while. So hey, might as well gas it up before you park it, right? Sir, that's the Bisimoto level 2.x cam and actually the idle is gonna be more stable once it warms up it's still this is still cold start so yep of course we'll be talking further about the intake pipe that we did here the throttle body radius inlet you know and of course we'll talk about the skunk too and all of the stuff that we run on this engine the whole setup but you know we gotta drive for gas first and then we start disassembling it yes sir of course we gotta warm it up a bit you know yes sir it's warming up really good it has ac and power steering so this is actually a street car you know i use this on the road and you'll know later all all the setups on this let's let it warm up for a bit before we take it for a drive and of course show you guys we're gonna turn on the AC just now and so you can see everything is functioning like a normal street car this is actually 13.2 is to 1 compression and it still runs on pump gas it runs quite well once tuned properly so we'll discuss about that once we talk about this full setup a little later but for now, because this is getting warmed up and it's getting warmer and warmer, let's go gas this up and show you guys the rest. Yes, sir. All right, now let's go. I'll just have to hop in. Let's go. Okay, now after gassing up, we're gonna drive out. Let me show you guys. We're gonna, you know, do one run, one simple run. That's all. We have to be careful because it's public roads. Oh yeah, it's actually the clutch is sliding really, really bad. Let's try it one more time and just make sure. Here. Oh yep, it is. But this, this is also running just a stock clutch. I have a six buck waiting in line. So we stop at a different station right, right now, just buying cigarettes and chips, you know. Here it's idling stable, see? really good right yes true street car then we head home because we have snacks and now here we are we cool it down before we start disassembling it but let me show you guys this first while cooling down onto the intake pipe i could have angled it a little better so that it goes go go straight to the cold air but the thing is I plan to move the condenser or change the condenser into a front mount, which is smaller and have the radiator here centered a bit. This way I can run the intake pipe all the way down here. This way it becomes an intake ram air on the bumper like that. You know, we're gonna put this intake by the bumper grill. This way you don't have to move the headlight, remove the headlight and you just have it all set up real good. And that's gonna be actually a lot better, right? Now let's talk about the setup. But before that, if you haven't subscribed, you have to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. This way you're updated whenever we 
have a new episode of the series and of course that also helps you to binge watch because each build the shop does we always make a series about it this way we can document it and of course the customer can keep track of what's going on with his own project and of course hit the like button will you because it helps the algorithm let the video spread out to a wider audience so we definitely appreciate that thank you all right now on to the setup it's a d16a6 obviously the esi head is a pm3 of course it's ported a bcmoto level 2.x cam which is a regrind and bcmoto high rpm springs d16a6 the block is esi stock bore and a pmo or ph12 pistons and arp rod bolts on stock rods skunk 2 an original intake not china the sported obviously 70 millimeter throttle body and a 421 header stainless steel but this time it's sequentially paired like high tech not the usual try y and yes the goal for this project is a 13 second run and some would think that maybe i'm challenged challenging myself to reach that goal not really because back in 2008 with bong hilario of h3 autoworks we did this with a simpler setup but the same exact camshaft and it ran 14.2 on a four-door esi like my own but back then the gear ratios and options and all like that was not yet common so it had a stock ph12 transmission like mine and of course no carbon fiber and i don't have any plans on running carbon fiber panels on my car so it did 14.2 back in 2008 so this has, has a better setup and a wilder way so hey maybe it's not too shabby right okay now let's disassemble the head we're gonna time lapse this for you guys and here we are now we set my phone by the hood this way it's an overhead look and my colleague is busy pulling down the head from the block of course as you can see this is why i really love the skunk 2 intake manifold because look at the runners are really straight and it's actually maximum length possible because any longer than this it's probably gonna hit the firewall look at the iacv is really really close right but now nah. okay now the head is coming off and here let's look at it closer yes sir oh look at that actually if you guys can't get the pmo or ph12 pistons running the pm7 or p29 is much the same i just prefer this because at first it's local it's cheap and it's you know it's not as high of a dome it's just a mid dome and yes this is why you, you always have to run engine coolant temp because look when i ran out i just started putting water and it's like starting to rust up again on the water jackets here's the view yes sir yes sir and of course the header is right there it's locally made but it's a sequentially paired header so this performs quite differently from your regular tri y so the old engine that me and bong did that ran 14.2 had a regular tri y so we know this could be better right now let's wipe off the oils from the head and take it to the workbench let's go let's go so now here is my d16a6 ported head and as you can see the bisimoto high rpm springs and oem retainers and let me show you this on the chamber side look you can see it's so simple it's just stock valves and nothing really special it's you know just pretty basic stuff right yes sir okay here you see stock valves stock size valves of course and it's milled 0 0.010 or 1 fourth millimeter that's why we got 13.2 or 13.16 to 1 so we just rounded off the 13.2 so now let's check out the bisimoto cam that i'm using and now here's the bisimoto level 2.x regrind cam and the specs are lift on the intake is 414 and the exhaust is 448 but the duration is 218 on the intake and 208 on the exhaust at 0 0.050 so if you measure it at 0 0.040 it might be bigger it's gonna be bigger the exhaust would have the intake would be 222 so like a crower stage 2 right and as i remove the cam gear i'm sure some of you guys are wondering how about the delta 272 when i had one in my hand i actually decided to degree it on my engine and here's what we got the lift of the intake is 0.394 and the exhaust is 0.370 on the 
left and then the ratio is 210 and 208 so you can see it's significantly smaller but we all know the delta 272 cam works right so this bismoto is even better now let me grab a stock d16 a6 cam so you guys can visualize and check and compare the regrind from bismoto here's a stock d16 a6 and wait let me get the other cam the bismoto cam and try to put it next to one another this way you guys can visually see the difference on the lobes it's actually quite significant if you look you know closely wait let me hold it yes sir wait oh it's moving around sorry sorry there you go you can see the lift and duration on the regrind is a lot significantly bigger than the stock one right yes sir and now i have a special one this is still a regrind and i asked bc back then to actually make a wilder one than level 2.x and you know i asked him and he always says this is a custom so i guess it's level custom or custom level regrind and you can see it's way way bigger than the level 2.x but it's still a regrind so it's not even a hard weld but look it's huge right and the specs on the custom grind is this. I'm putting the level 2.x so we, we can reference it or compare. Lift is 0.462 and 0.496, but the duration is 228 and 218, like a type R. That's really good, right? And the, the duration is like a type R, but the lift is more like a pro one. So we know this is gonna work, but I'll need the lash cap for this. So I'll use this afterwards if we don't reach the 13 second barrier. Now let me showcase you this Mugen cam. I got it from a GT pilot for uh, King Motorsports on the GT4 series. And look, now that's one huge lobe. Let's compare the level 2.x regrind. This is not a regrind, by the way. This is a billet cam. Look at that. That's crazy. This looks like it's like a bigger than a Pro 3, right? Yes, sir. Those lobes have duration for days. And lift. Yes, lift too. All right, let's, let me show you guys how it is on the head and why I haven't degreed it. Look, it doesn't turn because it hits on these sides on this area. So, you know, just like how BC said on the Mugen engine that he witnessed, you have to grind off those areas where the lobe hits because the cams are simply that big. So we're gunning for 13 seconds on the level 2.x regrind cam from Bisimoto. And if in case we fall short, we have the custom regrind from Bisimoto himself. The Mugen, I might just keep it. And so our plan for this series is to make use of my engine. We're going to dyno first with this stock B08 D16 Z6 or ESI intake manifold and then dyno a ported P08 intake manifold. This one, this exact manifold because this is mine. And this would be a good comparison while keeping the engine same, the setup, even the exhaust. A not biased test like other people do. This one will be a direct comparison from ported versus unported of course in the end we will dine on the actual setup with the ported skunk 2 pro series intake and look at that right you see all the wells that are needed because i kept punching through on the hole trying to get maximum taper on this even at the bottom there so we know or i know at least this is gonna make really good power so whatever it makes with the ported intake this is gonna be even better and here's the length it's around 9.2 inches runner length and since the ports are 3.25 so it's around 12.5 ish intake runner length and we've calculated it and here it is with 12.5 total runner length look look at the third harmonic it's from 7062 all the way to 8070 so 
When you know this, that's when you know how to take advantage of the power band that you're gonna get. Like for example, get the exhaust and the throttle, even the intake pipe working with this at this range. That's when you're gonna start pulling good torque and good numbers. No need for extra close gear ratios. And we'll delve deeper into that with the gear ratios and the RPM power band in this video here. You can click it here, but it'll also be in the description below. So you gotta finish this video, of course. And we'll cover every single detail on this engine, every single setup that we do until we get to 13 seconds. So you gotta click here 